Perception errors unfortunately happen quite often and come in many forms. So let's look at what those attributional errors are and how they might show themselves in our communication patterns. So what is an attribution error? Well, there isn't any one kind that occurs at all times. There are different types. We'll talk about just a few beginning with the fundamental attribution error. We tend to, in these situations, attribute others' behaviors to the kind of person they are when instead it may be a social or environmental factor. So fundamentally, we attribute their behaviors to their personality, to their personal characteristics, to the person they are and their background and such, when in reality it could be that there are things happening externally, not internally, that are causing them to struggle with making this situation work in the way they had ideally wanted. So in a fundamental attribution error, we attribute their behavior to internal attributions and not external attributions, which could very well be the case. Now, self-serving bias is sort of flip-flop from fundamental attribution error. In this case, we act in a self-serving way. So we take credit for our successes based on internal factors, internal attributions like our charm, personality, persuasive techniques, and etc. Instead of crediting our successes to external factors like luck or other individuals' generosity or good timing or what have you. If you think about the example of going to a job interview, the fundamental attribution error, the first one here, if we were to go through and, and go through the hiring process and we got the job and somebody else didn't, fundamental attribution error says that we would look at the people that did not get the job and say, see, well, they don't really have it like I have it. <laughs> they don't really have the intelligence or the charisma or what have you. They, are, they did not get the job because they weren't smart enough or they weren't charismatic enough or they weren't persuasive enough or what have you. So we say you didn't do well because of these internal things. And self-serving bias says that we say we did well because of those internal things. See, look, I got the job because I am so charismatic, I'm so smart, etc. Uh, instead of the fact that it could very well have been an outside factor, some kind of external itch situation, like maybe you had somebody that went to the same school as you when you graduated, or maybe you just had come in at the right time and your age was the kind of age they needed, or maybe you were um, able to work with somebody that you had worked with before and that helped, or you have family within the company. All of those things can impact these, these attribution errors and lead us to a self-serving bias. Now, what do we do about this? Now, there's a lot of things that you can do, and one of those is what's called the pillow method. The pillow method is a way of looking at our perceptions from different points of view. Uh, it's actually literally thinking of it like changing positions when you're sleeping on a pillow. When you're laying on your back, turning right, turning left. Those of you that have a hard time sleeping know exactly what I'm talking about. So you look at the argument from various sides. Position one being, I'm right, you're wrong. So in this disagreement, in this circumstance where our perceptions differ, I would look at it from the perspective of, okay, how I feel is the right way to feel and how you feel is the wrong way. And what does that look like? What are the details to that? And then once I've come to that conclusion, I can flip to the next position, position two. What if it was that you were right and I was wrong? What is it that you could be thinking? Why would you think you were right and I'm wrong? And then position three says maybe there's a little bit of both of us being right and both of us being wrong, so we need to break this down further. Position four is that maybe this isn't as big of a deal as I'm making it out to be. Why would that be? What would that look like? And position five being that there's truth in all perspectives, that both of us are 100% right at the same time. That sounds very complicated, but in reality, it is very much possible to say that we can both be 100% right. So in 
terms of understanding our perception and being able to adjust our personality traits, to adjust our perspectives, to properly attribute behavior, we should be able to go through all five positions and see which one is the most plausible. And in the very least, going through these positions will help you to understand more before you progress within the conflict. So knowing what it would look like if that other person was actually right and you were wrong will be more beneficial to you if you go that route and try to understand it than if you just stick with position one. Each of these things can help you to sort of see these various perspectives and ultimately enhance your ability to accurately attribute behavior.